but let's get a review underway because it's Total Recall Week. Okay, so it was I, ages ago. Well, yeah, I know. This came out on Wednesday. Apparently, James King talked about it last week, but it's Wednesday, so it basically opens this week. So, um, anyway, so a remake of the Paul Verhoeven film. I mean, it, it is a remake of the film as opposed to an adaptation of the Phil Dick original story. We can uh, remember it for you wholesale. Um, and it credits the screenplay of the original. So, it is basically a remake of a story. And I think it says officially that it was inspired by the, the Philip Dick story. The story in both cases is in, in the not too distant future, there's a schlubby worker with a boring life who dis decides to go to a company called Recall who say that what they can do is they can implant memories. They can give you experiences so vivid you will think you've actually lived them and you can have, go on a fantastical holiday, you can do whatever you want, you can live an alternative life as the result of an implant. What happens is that our hero decides that he, he wants to go on, on, on a life this time uh, in which he's a super spy. They say it's absolutely fine. The problem is you can't do anything that actually impinges on your real life. He said, that's fine. In real life, I never was a super spy, but maybe he was. Here's a clip. Hey, what do you know about recall? Do yourself a favor, Doug. Stay away from them. Why is that? Remember Travis from Shift 3? Travis. Went to recall for his bachelor party. Wanted to be king of Mars. Yeah, I'd like to go to Mars. Got himself a bottom of eyes. You believe those stories? About recall? Yeah. yeah, I do. Come on. You ever thought about it? Just a little bit? I don't need to think about it. Don't mess with your mind, man. Ain't worth it. All right, all right, listen up. Maybe I need my mind messed with. Doug Quaid of Mars. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't quite work, does it? Yeah. Okay, so... It's the, it's the of Mars bit that doesn't work. So, here's the thing to say. Um, in, in the original Earth and Mars, in the remake, uh, England and Australia, the United States of Great Britain or the Federation of Great Britain and the colony, now joined, incidentally, on either side of the world by a lift. You know how, in, how when you used to be a kid, you play on the beach, you say, if I dig far enough, will I come out in China? Going, no, because actually you, that's not what happens. But now, in the, the conceit of the movie is, there is the United Federation of Great Britain up here, and there is the colony down there, which is Australia, and there is between them a lift shaft. Okay, stick with me. You go in the lift, you go down into the center of the earth. As you get to the fiery center of the earth, gravity inverts. So there's a gravity shifting and then you come back up the other side. I was I was hoping that Rick Wakeman would be there just to serenade us as we go through the center of the earth. So through the center of the enough. earth, but also with the six wives of Henry VIII. So I have to say for, from the beginning that I do have a problem with the lift shaft through the center of the earth. That is basically the plot of Daleks Invasion Earth, whatever it is, 21 feet, when they drill out the center of the earth and put a motor in it in order to turn the earth into a spaceship. And although I don't have, you know, time travel, all the rest of it, I do have a trouble with the lift shaft that goes through the centre of the Earth. However, that said, in the original, in the Paul Verhoeven version, the one problem they had was that, because uh, Verhoeven, Verhoeven ended up helming it after a lot of other people had been attached to it. David Cronenberg at one point was going to do Total Recall. And when Schwarzenegger came to the project, they said, the problem is, Schwarzenegger never looks like an ordinary schlub. He always looks like a super spy. I mean, for a start, he doesn't look like anybody else at the beginning. When you see him in the other scenes with the workers, he's, you know, twice the size of them. Plus, he has a European accent, which nobody else does. So in the Verhoeven version, they ended up pulling down the front end of the script to, to pretty much dispense with the idea that he's ever an ordinary guy. In... With the remake, the one thing it has to its favour is that Colin Farrell is much more convincing. He could be an ordinary blue-collar schlub. That is true. So that does solve that particular problem. Also in the original, Sharon Stone is the double-crossing wife, literally is there at the beginning and then disappears. In this, she's... Am I, am I stopping? No, no, carry on. Oh, fine. In this, she has a role all the way through. And it was interesting that one shift between when the original Total Recall was made and when this was made is that now there are many more action heroines. I mean, Jessica Biel's in there. Um, you know, uh, Kate Beckinsale's doing this. You've got, uh, for example, you know, whereas before Cynthia Rothrock movies would come straight out on DVD. Now Mila Jovovich is an action hero whose movies open in the cinema. G Gina Carano is now a big mainstream star. That has changed. And so the movie is actually much more egalitarian egalitarian in terms of its its gender roles and that was kind of interesting the downside is that the cgi special effects have none of the appeal of the plastic i mean there was a reason why all those plastic reality movies came out around that time and it was because what people were doing with physical special effects was really quite extraordinary plastic reality owed an awful lot to the genuine plasticity the physical plasticity of the special effects you don't get any of that there are endless references to blade runner there is in fact one shot in which colin farrell's character is seen running along with a trench coat holding a gun in an angle that cannot be accidentally the silhouette outline from the image of harrison ford in the poster for blade runner and one invokes blade runner you know at one's peril frankly 
In the end, the problem is Len Wiseman is no Paul Verhoeven. There are reasons why this is closer to the story, it, you know, what the original script would have been because of the casting of Colin Farrell. But it did feel, oddly enough, particularly unmemorable. It's not terrible. The lift is silly. But it's not terrible, but it is very, very forgettable, which is ironic considering Given the subject the title.